Rulers are essential for accurate designs. It couldn't be more perfect, isn't it? You heard me right. In fact, when it comes to drawing and design, precise and accurate measurements is all that is required. Designers need to measure things on pages. So, instead of downloading tools to measure the objects on the pages, Adobe InDesign lets you measure through electronic rulers. What is ruler? It is a feature to measure the size of the image and graphic elements on the pages. And also, it lets you place the vertical and horizontal guides to control the alignment of other elements. This area is the ruler. One ruler is located at the top side of this window. And the other ruler is located at the left side of this window. If you can't see the ruler, you can go to View, Show Rulers. And if you want to hide the ruler, you can again go to View, Hide Rulers. The shortcut key is Ctrl R. So, press Ctrl R once again, and the ruler is back. Press it once again, ruler is gone. By default, Rulers measure in picas. Pika is a print term. One pika is equal to 12 points or one sixth of an inch. Picas are subdivided into 12 points per pika. That is 72 points per inch. Now let's focus on this ruler area. It looks exactly like an inch tape. So when you move your cursor over here, you will notice that the numbers are starting from the top left side corner of the page. This is the origin point for every page, also known as zero point. However, Adobe InDesign lets you customize origin of the rulers. Now look at this single page ruler. Look closely that the ruler measurement is starting from zero inch. Let me place the guide over here. Look at the X coordinates. It is showing 0 inches. Now, I will place the other guideline on the right side of this page. So the X coordinate is 8.2677 inches. This is the width of this page. This looks fine for single page. How about the facing pages? We shall explore. First, I will go down to facing pages and look closely that the ruler is continuing for the next page rather than starting back from the zero. This origin is called spread origin. The ruler won't reset for the next page. It will show ruler for two pages at a time, hence covering up the whole spread. If you want to customize the origin, you can go to Edit, Preferences, Units and Increments. In the Ruler Unit section, you can clearly see that the origin is set to spread. Now, I will change it to page. Click OK. Notice that the ruler of the second page has reset. So, each page will display the rulers for one page at a time. Let's go back to units and increments. And change the origin to spine. Notice that the ruler origin is starting from middle of the both pages. For left side page, the numbers are going backwards. 
while the numbers are going forward for the right side page. Hence, the spine displays ruler for the area where two pages spreads are bound together. Of course, this ruler will look different for each one of you. Some of you have chosen millimeters, centimeters, pixels, points, so on and so forth. My ruler unit is set to inches. To make sure, right click on this ruler and you will get this measurement units list. In my case, inches unit is checked. To change the measurement unit, click on any of these units. Or, you can go to Edit, Preferences, Units and Increments. Note that if I change the unit of measurement for the rulers to pixels, then all the tabs, margins, indents and other measurements appear in pixels. Let me choose pixels. Now you see, this ruler looks different from the previous one. You see, this page is almost 600 pixels wide. But hey, I have only changed the measurement unit for this top ruler. I need to change the unit for left ruler as well. Now, the height in pixels is around 850 pixels. Now, I will choose centimeters. See the chain. So does millimeters, points, picas, so on and so forth. Keep in mind, it is not necessary to keep both top and left side rulers in same measurement units. You can have top ruler in inches while having the left ruler in picas. There is nothing wrong at all. Tip of the day. Good part about rulers and ruler guides is that both of them are under our control. Both of them can be moved, removed, locked, unlocked, displayed and hide the way we want. My next tutorial will be about using guides in Adobe InDesign. I hope this tutorial helped you gain a lot of knowledge about rulers in Adobe InDesign. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you have any questions related to this tutorial, please leave the comment. Also, subscribe my channel to become part of this journey. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.